In the last video, we introduced this idea of the income effect, which is when demand for just the notion that if you change uh, prices, you also sort of change income. And the income effect is that you know demand for all normal goods rises when income rises and vice versa. It'll fall when the demand falls or when income falls. But let's focus on this word normal. There are other types of goods that are not normal. And there is a class of good called inferior goods too. And they have the opposite property. So uh, demand falls when income rises. So what's an inferior good? Well, like a classic example is something like pu public transportation. Uh, where you use it a lot if you don't have a lot of income, but then if you can afford, as you get more income, you might choose to buy a car instead and not use uh, public transportation as much. Other examples would be like certain kinds of food that are maybe not that good, but really cost effective, like just a lot of rice or a lot of potatoes or a lot of ramen or something. And when you can afford like instant pack ramen, not the high end stuff, whatever. Uh, but when you can afford something different, you're going to consume less of that stuff and more of a substitute that's better. And so it's this idea that they're inferior. Uh, there's something that you kind of settle for because they're cheap and that's all you can afford. Inferior goods can lead to a strange situation, which is kind of a curiosity, where uh, the price rises and demand for the good also rises. Okay, when this happens, this is called a Giffen good. They're not very common. In fact, there's some debate about whether they exist at all in the real world, but there are a couple good candidates for things that actually exhibit this property. But from the perspective of what we've learned in class, what would that look like? Well, suppose the price of shelter rises. Okay, that means we can't afford as much shelter. And this is the amount of shelter we bought at the old price. If we're gonna buy more when the price rises, we need to be on this part of the budget constraint. And if we draw a certain kind of uh, preference curve with this kind of shape, well, then it's possible that we end up over here. So what's going on in this case? Well, let's decompose the uh, income and substitution effects to sort of see what's happening. So the income effect is going to give us a line that looks sort of like this. Kind of a standard effect. I'm sorry, the substitution effect is, is standard. We shift to consumption of more food and less shelter. But because this is an inferior good, when we now drop to a lower income from this line to this line, oops, not that line, uh, this line, demand for this good rises, okay? The price rises and demand rises. Um, and you can see that it behaves normally in the substitution, like the substitution effect is sort of as we expect, but the n inferior good nature of it means that when we can't afford as much, we uh, increase our consumption. And because in this case, the uh, negative income effect since it's a, uh, an inferior good, is really strong, it's greater than the substitution effect, we end up with this Giffen good. And so that's why these are not that common, because you need like a good that has a really weak substitution effect, but a really large income effect that's negative and an inferior good.